Hi, everyone. Welcome back to Holistic Health Radio. I'm your host, Sarah Liz King. Today on the show, I'm joined by Karen Hanlon, who is a certified art therapy practitioner who empowers both adults and children with her Painting Your Soul program. Her work has been beneficial for those with developmental delays or autism, and she's worked with counseling and recovery organizations across the United States. A big warm welcome to the show, Karen. How are you doing today? Well, thank you so much. Thank you, Sarah, for having me. I'm so excited to be on your show. I'm so excited to have this conversation. Now, we are going to talk about how you can use art therapy kind of as an adjunct or Um, as a different way to kind of work through your own healing or your own recovery journey. But before I get into that, I always like asking my guests a few fun get to know you questions. The first of which is always (laughs) the first of which is always the same, which is what is your coffee order if you're a coffee drinker? Oh, caramel latte. I love caramel. (laughs) Caramel latte. See, in Australia, where I live, I mean, I'm from America originally, so there's like all the fun different like syrups and additions that you can get. Here in Australia, coffee is either black or with milk. (laughs) It's very rare that we have like all of the really fun additions. So whenever like pumpkin spice latte season comes around, which is kind of now, yeah, (laughs) yeah, we don't have that. Too, And during that season, I love the pumpkin spice. Oh, that's like incredible. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, it's so tasty, but I think, yeah, that's the American in my heart talking. Uh, what are you grateful for today? I am grateful for my health. I I am very, very lucky to be healthy and uh, thriving and, you know, just being healthy, people take for granted. And, you know, I don't do that anymore. I, I every single day, I'm just grateful I can get up and I don't have any ailments and I have enough health and well-being to be able to put a program together and actually get it out there to the world. So my health is probably the most thing I'm grateful for because without it, I wouldn't be talking to you. Yeah, a hundred percent, a hundred percent. Now, this is always a little bit of a quirky question that, that throws people off. What is the best gift that you've ever given someone else or that you've ever received? Hmm. Okay. I would say the best gift I have given out is the gift I just created it called painting your soul kit, which has everything in it to help with uh, anxiety and people are taking it very seriously. And it is my gift that I've given out to not just one person, but multiple and hundreds of people. So I would say that's the best gift I've given to anyone, creating something and giving it out, not just to one person, but to hundreds and maybe thousands one day. Yeah, and I'm so excited for us to talk a little bit more about what's involved in that as we get into our discussion today. Um, Two more questions, which is, what can we always find in your fridge? Ketchup. (laughs) Ketchup. For those in Australia, Tomato sauce, but yes, ketchup, no, ketchup and tomato sauce are actually different. Oh, really? How is it different? It's just like the consistency and slight variation of the ingredients. But yeah, I was told here when I first moved that ketchup is not the same as tomato sauce. It does, it does taste slightly different. Oh yeah. No, it's always in my fridge. Everywhere I go, there's always ketchup. It's oh, it goes with everything. (laughs) It goes with it. Yeah. 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 (laughs) <laughs> and what are your daily non-negotiables that make you feel your absolute best? I have to be honest with you. Walking the beach um, is, I live across from the ocean, actually the Gulf of Mexico, I have to call it that. Um, and if I don't do that almost at least four times a week, I, I can tell the difference. Um, hmm. It helps my well-being and, sorry, my dog, excuse me. I didn't expect nope. that. That's all right. Half the time you can hear my little dog, Henry, barking in the background and everyone knows and loves him. So don't worry about it. <laughs> it's all day until now, of course, now that I need him to be quiet, he's going to sit and bark. Um, anyway, um, walking the beach uh, often helps um, your nervous system and it, it truly does balance me out. Nature, but because I'm on the ocean, the the the, the sound of the waves just the visual of the water. Um, everything about it has helped me calm 
naturally. So that's a non-negotiable for me. I have to be near the water. I have to be able to walk near the water, be in the water. Um, I would say three to four days a week because that's what keeps me balanced. Yeah, I am probably biased because I live near the ocean as well. And that daily walk, I do it in the morning with my dog. You know, we get a coffee, walk by the beach. And I probably have thousands of photos on my phone just because like I always feel like it's such a slice of paradise to be right near the water. And I do the same thing. I have, I do a lot of photography and I take pictures and videos all the time when I'm out at the beach. I just, it's just, it's beautiful. It's fascinating. And I never get tired of a sunset of all the sunsets I watch. I never get tired of capturing a beautiful sunset. Yeah. Yeah. For me, it's the opposite. It's the sunrise. That's Love right. Love seeing the sunrise. That's yeah. right. You are exactly opposite right now, time-wise. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's our morning. It's your evening. Um, now, for those listeners that may not know that much about you, can you tell us a little bit about who you are and also what you do? Sure. Well, I am a, originally a teacher by trade. I used to teach elementary school children um, and for many years, that was kind of in my background. I didn't realize how much I'd utilize it in the future, though. So I've taken a lot of my teaching skills to the day, to today, actually, with what I'm doing. Um, I went through a difficult time in my life about 10 years ago, and I gravitated back to what I did with my students that helped them really decompress and release anxiety. I went back to art and painting, um, and I did a lot of writing with them to try to calm them, and I started use, using that myself. When I gravitated to the art, which I'm not saying I'm an artist, but I used it as a tool, I would be painting on canvases without thinking. I just It just felt good. I didn't know why it felt good. I just would sit there and just paint because it took away any anxiety I have. And I remembered as a teacher, what did I do with my students? Well, I had them writing stories. In my case, I was journal writing. So I started writing in my journal daily. So I'm painting and I'm writing in my journal and I'm realizing I'm expressing and getting it out of me without even knowing what I was doing at the time, but I kept doing it on a daily basis. Um, and so with that difficult time I went through, I realized I was onto something that was really helpful. So I kept doing it. And as time went on, I added pieces, um, for example, essential oils every day. I use that to help relieve anxiety. Um, I would read affirmations in my mirror and stick it to my mirror every single day. So all these little pieces that I used as I was going through my own tumultuous time in my own life, I kind of put together in what I call a formula and, or steps. And when I realized how helpful it was to me every day, I actually created workshops for other people and did them all over the country between here, California, Utah, and realized uh, the workshops were incredibly helpful and beneficial because they included all the steps that I had created in my own personal experience. And in doing that, the workshops were a huge hit. And um, I've been doing those for the last 10 years. And that's amazing. What, at the beginning of Painting Your Soul became, it came out of a difficult time in my own life and realizing I can do these kinds of holistic things that were helpful and they really were helpful. Art and being creative is incredibly important. It helps the uh, creative side of your brain open up and it helps your emotional side speak and take your analytical mind and push it aside for a minute so that you can um, let go. Yeah. And for those who may not really understand like what art therapy is, how would you describe it? Well, art therapy, had, there's a few different versions of it. Now, my version is a little different, but art therapy in general is a way for you to release anything that you might be going through in a way that you don't have to talk or articulate. And when people are going through a difficult time, especially, they have a hard time talking about it. They don't even know how to begin to talk about it sometimes. Sometimes they're just simply not able to. So the art part of it helps them to release through creative expression, which can be writing too. Anything where your hand to paper is involved. And when that happens, you, you'll see them being able to connect in a different way and be able to express in a way without words. Because sometimes, especially little ones, can't express with words. Uh, and they find it easier to use that avenue to uh, express. And they don't necessarily have to know what they're expressing. They just have to know it feels good and it felt good to have done that. 
So the therapeutic approach to art is probably one of the most uh, underrated things I feel um, right now today, because it does have a huge impact when you do it and using your creative mind. And this art therapy helps you do that. It helps you uh, get into a space where you feel safe to express without words. Yeah. And you mentioned that, you know, you began engaging in art when you were going through a really stressful time yourself. Initially, did you, when you, you know, gravitated towards doing that, did you even have in the forefront of your mind, like, this is for therapeutic reasons? Or was it just because you, you knew it was something that innately felt good for you? It innately felt good for me. I'm not an artist, by the way. I, I'm not a painter. Um, I'm creative, certainly, and I'm innovative, but I'm not necessarily a painter, an artist in the way people consider art. Um, I picked it up because it felt good. It just was, it felt good to take a paintbrush to a canvas and just, I use my hands sometimes. I would take my hands and just move color and the colors and the movement and my hands touching the canvas, the paintbrush touching the canvas. Sometimes I would get on the kitchen floor and like on all fours moving with my hands. And I'm telling you the feeling that what that helped me do was to relieve anything that I was going through and it just lifted it. And I felt better. And I'm, I did not go into this thinking anything about art therapy. I just knew that it helped me feel better, as simple as that. And I did it all the time through a difficult time of probably four years. And I have canvases stacked up in my closet to prove it and journals stacked up into that closet to prove all the writing I did and just letting go your feelings uh, through paint, canvas and journaling helped me. And then I realized this is a thing. And then I delved into it more and realized this is art therapy. And I did it before I really realized what it was. And then now I'm understanding the value of it. And that's why I'm feeling this uh, need to put it out there in a bigger way, because my goodness, it couldn't be more holistic in the way of healing. Yeah. Right now, what we're going through uh, in the world, we need alternative ways to release a lot of uh, traumas at this point and, and anxieties. And this is a way that helped me. And I, I was in a difficult time and, and it really truly helped me. So I just went on based on what helped me and then realized when it started helping the women I was in men that I was working with in workshops, I was like, okay, this is really, really beneficial. And the, the testimonials coming back from people when they said, this is what they do now all the time. And it, it is what they gravitate to. That is when I realized this is something people can use in an alternative, healthy way of releasing versus what's out there, which is not always so healthy. Um, yeah. And I, yeah. that time period with just those things and with the added, you know, essential oils of positive affirmations and meditation, all of that together combined. But the art part of it really opens up that part of your mind to let go and it helps release and it helps you connect to yourself in ways you may not have before. And I noticed when that happened for me is when I came into my own, oh, I am something that I didn't realize I'm coming into my own and I didn't know this is who I was. So as I painted, I was peeling off pieces of an onion every time I painted, finding myself more and more as I did that. So it was also empowering and it also helped me find who I really was in the midst of this process. So yeah. it did quite a bit. <laughs> and and I, for a lot of our listeners, like they, for this particular podcast, they are often kind of going through a journey of recovery, whether that's from an eating disorder or disordered eating, or maybe like a difficult relationship with their, their body or exercise. And it was something that I went through myself. And it was really interesting because when I, I mean, I did various forms of my own treatment throughout all of the years that it took me to eventually recover. But when I was probably at my lowest and I engaged in I guess a more intensive form of treatment, which was like an intensive outpatient program. Mm -hmm. We actually had art therapy. And Mm -hmm. at first I was like, absolutely not. I'm not doing this. There's no point to this. Like, why would I just want to like create a holiday card or why would I want to like learn how to crochet or why do I want to sit here and like paint, like paint by numbers? 
But what I actually realized is it was a form of almost like mindful distraction that allowed me to be okay with just like emotions coming in and out. And I think particularly for for my audience who uses their logical brain so, so much, it is really hard to learn how to process your emotions. When I say that word out loud, most people are like, I don't like, they kind of like squirm because they're like, I don't really want to feel my feelings. Like that just feels so uncomfortable through the process of, I guess, some of this, like you mentioned a few of the different steps that are involved in your program. Can you walk us through like some of the steps that you think would be most beneficial for anyone curious to explore art therapy and how, I guess, reconnecting with your creative with your creative side and exploring these kind of like passions or hobbies or interests beyond food and exercise can actually help you in a recovery journey? Guest appearance. Look, therapy dog. Okay, they'll be all right. Um, so, so what you were saying before was we were kind of talking about, I think we'll start from one of the biggest obstacles that you see with people who are in recovery from an eating disorder is letting go of control. So maybe just start from that point. Some of the biggest problems I see with, um, young adults going through an eating disorder is the inability to let go of control. They have to feel they have control over something. And when I work with um, my clients that are dealing with that, the way that I do this particular art therapy, they don't even paint. It's the very last step they do because they have anxiety even coming to a canvas just like you did. Like, what am I I'm not doing this? So when I do the steps, it is to help them let go. So by the time they're painting, they're not even thinking. I start out with, um, they start with journaling. How do I feel? They do write down very simply. Sometimes it's just a sentence, but at least that's the beginning of connection. And then I have them do the essential oils. So they breathe that in. They're beginning to, the anxiety level starting to come down. Um, I have affirmations they read, which is bringing in the positive, uh, positive affirmations to offset the negative self-talk they often have. And with that, they're, I tell them they're planting seeds, even if they don't feel those words, they're planting seeds that do grow the more often they say them. So those are three steps prior to even painting. So that takes probably about 30 minutes. And then they go into a meditation, which helps them completely calm down and be in a space of being in the present moment is where they can let go. Where they get in that moment, there's no thought and they're just in the moment. And then at that point, they're guided into painting. So the painting experience isn't, there's no analytical mind uh, rationalizing anything. They're just letting go through paint strokes. So the way that I've done it, especially for them, is, is very powerful because they're able to let go of the control piece that's just saying, I, I've got to have this. It's got to be a red barn. I have to paint this. You know, the, there's no thinking. So the steps in which I put together help them let go of that control so they can be in a space of peace when they're painting and that's where the magic happens. There's no thinking. Yeah. They're like dreaming while they're awake, if that makes sense. That's what they always say. They feel like they're dreaming while they're awake. And the journaling after the painting, you'll see a boatload of writing after, not before. Before is they're they're still like this. After is when they're oh they feel like this relief kind of and they're able to write down those feelings and that's where they can take it off of their shoulders and put it onto paper and you have it on a canvas. And you've got the beginning of healing, connecting, releasing, and healing. Yeah, I think uh, a really that's a really effective way to kind of help people through what can be such a really big obstacle. Mm -hmm. You know, my therapist joked with me. She's like, "You didn't crack smile. You didn't cry. You didn't have any emotion for like the first three months." Yeah. that you were like in this program and I was like 100% because I thought that showing emotion was like a weakness but then I actually when I actually started to move through my feelings and experience them and process them I was like oh this is a bridge this is the way out this and is I think that it's exactly what it yeah. is this is a bridge and the art therapy um is is a bridge and it is a way out yeah. 
and people have to see it as a way out, not intimidating, like, oh, what? I, they have the fear factor that comes in when they see Canvas. And I try, all I do with the way my program works is to take the fear factor out. And I do it in incremental steps so they aren't afraid when they touch a Canvas. So I take the yeah. fear out of it so that they can actually have that space in that moment where they can do that. And um, Because I, I think we, one of the other obstacles people would often struggle with especially if they're kind of having those perfectionist tendencies like a lot of people with you know history of disordered eating and an eating disorder often have is going I can't do this I'm I'm not a painter I'm not creative and it it creates that hesitation that I won't I don't want to do this if it's not going to be the best right. how do you help people combat that mindset so they can just use it as a form of expression. Um, if, if they're really struggling with it. And I've had, I've had maybe one or two times where someone has really like stared at a canvas going, I just can't. <laughs> and, and I, and I really, I kind of lean over and I say, just what color comes to your mind? What's the first color that comes to your mind? And this, by the way, is in my meditation, but I asked them that and they go, well, yellow. I said, well, paint yellow. Well, how? Just, just one stroke. And then they do that. And then they look at me and I go, what's your next color? Blue. Okay. One stroke at a time. Sometimes we bring it back to basics and they start with one color that comes to your mind. Don't think about it. Just, just whatever color comes to your mind first. They just need a beginning. So when I do my meditation, that's what I ask them. Find the color that comes to mind first. That's the first color you're going to paint with. It takes the anxiety out of even how to begin. So one yeah. stroke at when I am doing these presentations in public, I actually have a huge canvas and people coming by wherever I am, whatever event I'm at, they were, uh, they would come up and go, Oh, what's this? I said, well, we're painting. Would you, would you like to paint? Oh no, no, no. I'm not an artist. I said, you don't have to be an artist to enjoy this. Pick up a paintbrush and they kind of timidly pick one up and they just do a little stroke and they put it down. Like it's the biggest thing they could ever do. And I laugh because I'm like, okay, then another person walks up and she does a stroke and another person. And then all of a sudden I have a crowd of people that are waiting to do it again because they liked how it felt to put a color on a canvas. And then the more they did it, they realized that oh, this is really fun. It's the first, let me break the barrier that this is scary. It's not, it's actually fun. And what we're trying to do in this uh, art therapy movement is to have people try it and understand it is fun and it hasn't it doesn't have anything to do with perfection or good or bad there's no judgment and certainly no reason to make it that it is meant to be something fun and enjoyable it's a representation of you connecting with yourself yeah and if someone you know you you kind of like laid it out perfectly that a lot of people have that initial like oh I can't do this I am not an artist or I'm not creative for anyone that might be listening to this podcast and going like, okay, I feel like maybe a form of creative expression could complement what I'm doing to allow me to kind of like move through my feelings. Like, you know, we're talking about today, but they're really, really hesitant to start where they don't know like what to do or where to begin. What kind of advice would you give them? I would say do a little writing about it. Get a journal out and write out some of your thoughts. Get down what it feels like, what you think you might want to do, and some ideas, and write first. Because, again, writing is expression, right? Just like painting is, so is writing. And if they're having a hard time getting to the canvas, again, that's why I journal right prior to it. But I do have them write for that reason so that it takes away that bit of anxiety. They're getting hand to paper, and they're starting there, and then – it takes away that little, I don't know if I can do that. They have the ideas written down and they go, okay, I think I can do this. It takes away some of the anxiety. So I would suggest doing a little journaling prior to painting and listening yeah. to music, by the way, and listening to um, any kind of music, any kind of stimulation music wise helps as well. Yeah. And obviously being able to get into the process of then painting or doing something creative we're talking about all of this kind of like processing and healing that goes on and I guess a greater understanding of yourself in general for those that you've worked with who have kind of 
used this process in their recovery journey from an eating disorder or disordered eating what has what have been some of the I guess epiphanies that they've said that they've had from doing this I I believe uh, a sense of empowerment why is that because they're doing something and finding some answers on their own now uh, this is such a wonderful tool to use in tandem with anything but when they're doing this and having this time to themselves, they are actually empowering themselves and coming up with things on their own too. So giving them a sense of empowerment is important, especially for um, eating disordered um, individuals. They need to feel yeah. there's a power coming back to them where they feel such a lack of it at the time. So in doing this, it gives them some a sense of power back. Yeah, that's so true because a lot of times in traditional treatment, you know, it's being dictated kind of, what your nutrition will be like, how many times you're going to therapy when you're seeing the doctor and the dietitian. And it can be really exhausting, even though you know you're doing the right things and, and this is going to be ultimately helpful for you. It can feel like recovery is happening to you in a yeah. way because you're not, you know, sometimes in those initial stages when you might be very unwell, and that's very necessary for someone to kind of come in and kind of help you get to a place where you can be medically stable and feeling better. They Having feel something that's just... Taken, they feel their power is taken away at that time. And it, yeah. and it is. And so what this is doing is gaining that back. They're getting their power back because they're doing something for themselves that has nothing to do with anyone else telling them what to do, what's right or wrong, good or bad. This is their time, their safe space to do something for them to find some connection within themselves that has nothing to do with anyone else. So that, and I agree with you. I think you bring up such a good point because like, you know, from what I hear with work, working with my clients all the time is like, we're working on breaking a lot of that black and white thinking, a lot of those all or nothing mentalities and you can't do art wrong. <laughs> like there's right. no, there's no way to do it wrong. So I think that's something that can be so helpful for people to break, you know, all of these molds that are in their, their brain. It's a way of saying to yourself, if I can allow this to just be what it is, maybe I can allow other elements of my life to kind of be a bit more flexible yes. than they have been previously. And being able to take something that you learn in one area and apply it to another area can be like a really good positive step, whether you're recovering from an eating disorder or, you know, another stressful time in your life. Mm -hmm. It's just another helpful tool that you can use. But like anything, there's often a lot of like misconceptions and, and skepticism. Have you mm -hmm. noticed any like stereotypes or myths that kind of surround art therapy that you're always working to overcome and dispel? Well, I think a lot of people don't regard it as anything helpful necessarily. And it's quite the opposite. It's probably one of the most helpful things you can do in recovery. And in it's, it needs to be outside of clinical or it, it needs to be widespread everywhere in everyone's home to be pulled out when they need it as a tool instead of something else that isn't quite as healthy. And they, this is something with my clients, they pull this out, not only with me, but at home and at home, they have these things on hand and they are able to take them and pull them out and use them on a regular basis. And this is no different than emotional, what they call the emotional first aid kit pulling out your canvas, get your, if they're really having a struggle, they have these things ready to pull out and it's training them to use this and, and these, uh, the journals and the uh, aspects of what I do, having them on hand when there is an issue to pull that off and use that. And most people can't imagine regarding that as helpful because they just don't see art as, they haven't come to terms with the fact that art can be a healing tool. Yeah, so. I think we've seen the same thing with other, I guess, what we've previously considered more like alternative mm -hmm. health strategies. Like, you know, 10, 15 years ago when people talked about mindfulness or meditation, it was like, oh, there was like a handful of people doing it. It might be because you do something like yoga, whereas now it's like very, very mainstream and really recommended for so many different reasons. I guess for you, what is your hope in terms of people, 
using art therapy in their lives? I, I really would like to see everyone use it as their tool, their go-to tool when they're really struggling. Um, I've, I've witnessed uh, doctors that are heading up the emergency rooms and local hospitals here using this kind of thing as their alternative way where they don't have to talk to a therapist. They don't take any kind of a drug, but they'll sit down and do this painting. And these are high power doctors that will take this now because it's been shown to them. They just didn't understand this was a thing. Now it's shown to them. And I have doctors now doing this specifically to release their anxiety from working in an emergency room where they have high end stress. And this is something where they're coming to terms with as a practical use, usable thing that helps decrease their stress level. And my goal is to get it out there in healthcare and, and pretty much every demographic and everyone can, can utilize art in some way. But even as uh, nurses who are burnt out, this can be something they can do um, for burnout. Uh, yeah. people, it's, it's endless what this can do. And my goal is to get it out there in every single possible way for people to use as a tool to help relieve not only whatever trauma they might be going through, but their anxiety, their stress, and help them connect to disconnect from the world for a minute to find themselves again, which is what we need to all do sometimes to stop everything and find connection within ourselves so we can make at least the next right step in our own lives. When things get so static up here, we, we're not able to think straight. This is what we can do to connect deeply and at least get some clarity because it does bring you into the present moment when you're when you're doing an art activity. It helps you get yeah. there. When you're in the present moment, you can make clear decisions. You're so right. I feel like oftentimes when we're overwhelmed, when you know our nervous system's on fire, we're dysregulated. And we're trying to make like logical decisions it's absolutely impossible to do we have to get to a stage where we can like regulate ourselves down where we can kind of go okay like, this is how i'm feeling this is what i'm experiencing that's when you can make better decisions that's when you can make decisions that you know will serve you well versus right when you're kind of up here and that's what i'm talking to people about all the time you know we think our logical brain is in the driver's seat you know actually it's our emotional brain that's in the driver's seat and we gotta we have to talk to that you know mm -hmm. our, our logical brain's the one in the passenger seat and we have to make sure that we are finding ways that we feel comfortable regulating our emotions to get to a place where we can then talk to our logical brain make better decisions engage in more behaviors that are going to ultimately help us so i think that's such a good point to end this amazing conversation on but I'd love for our audience to be able to connect with you to find out more about what you're doing so where are the best places to find you online to hear more about your programs and I'll be sure to include all of these links in the show notes as well yeah www.paintingyoursoul.com is my website and that actually will take you uh, to all my social media. It's kind of a one stop and it has everything there to find social media on Facebook and Instagram. Um, they're all kind of on my website and you'll see um, all the testimonials and all the people that have found art to be incredibly healing and what it's really done for them and how their lives have changed. You'll see some of the testimonials up there, which are worth reading because you can't deny when someone comes up and says, my life has been changed by this. And I, I am now in a different road than I was before because I stopped and listened and connected my, um, my Facebook page. All of those will share stories. Um, and, uh, yeah, so my painting your soul.com you'll find everything. I'll there. be amazing. I'll be sure to put that in the show notes for our audience so they can find you and connect. I want to thank you again. This has been such an incredible conversation. Thanks for coming on. And I know that all of our listeners will definitely take some of this advice away and hopefully implement it into their own journeys. So for anyone listening, be sure to either tag myself or you can find all of Karen's social media links below. Feel free to tag her if you really enjoyed this episode um, and also leave a five-star rating and review if you are on apple itunes it really helps support 
the show if you're watching on YouTube. Give us a thumbs up and subscribe so you never miss an episode. And we will be back next week with a fresh new podcast that you can wrap your ears around. So take care and look after yourselves until then. Thank you. Thank you so much. (laughs) Thanks so much, Karen. That was amazing. Is it okay?